Please welcome back to the stage the chair of today's summit, Doug Van Dyke. We have a little bit of extra time. Does anyone have any questions? We've had some very, very profound speakers and you know, two of the foremost experts on disaster preparedness. I would love to say, okay, I see one in the audience. Do we have a, a oh, there's, yeah, there's several. Yeah, let's, let's do some Q&A. Yeah, yell yeah, yeah, loud, we'll repeat the question. Beside you, because that's where you get hope for yourself. Then you get that hope passed on to others. Because the first responder, there's not a first responder in this room who doesn't know the feeling of the look on the person's face when you're the first to show up. I guess I'll repeat, I'll repeat uh, synopsize. It's not just the power of hope, it's the faith, the faith of what you do in the faith of the people you work with in public safety, specifically you mentioned working with your partner. I think it's partner down here, but it's partner. <laughs> Over here, there's a question. I'm coming. Boston response. Uh, I'm from the DC Public Schools, the High School EMT Academy, and I would love to hear you or any of our uh, distinguished uh, panelists and speakers comment anything on the challenges of school security, and especially the things that no one is talking about, but we might actually need to consider. I, I, the issue on school security and our kids. And I think that we have to address it head on. And I don't want to skip over what you said, what you do, is developing an EMT academy for kids in high school. The youth are our future. If we don't start bringing them in to emergency management, EMS, public health, all of public safety, we need to capture the youth today. FEMA Corps is a great example, 18, 24 year olds. I'm biased about that, right, Brett? But understanding the school security, we have to find different ways. And it goes back to sometimes basic designs how we design the schools. If you look at the, some of the schools, they can just walk right in, the, break the glass, go in. Dev how we design the schools is huge. And having a discussion with the parents, the community at large, the students themselves, as well as school administrators. There's so many things that can be done that you can help. You want to prevent it from ever happening, but if it does happen, there's technologies that can make people safe today that we should be utilizing. Any now more I know questions? I'm over time. Hi, Kelly Discount with Booz Allen Hamilton. And so my question for you is, some of my colleagues and I have been sitting around talking about how we need to start thinking about National Preparedness Month this year. And my question for you is, from all of your wealth of experience, um, how do we make this from National Preparedness Month where we're only encouraging people to think about this in September and genuinely get people to take actions or continue that throughout the entire year. Sure, it's a month, we wanna focus on it, we wanna right. take the opportunity um, to do that in September, but. Never let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> I, I say that half jokingly, yeah. but people are listening now and they're gonna be listening a lot more with the coronavirus, it's, you know, they're starting to listen. This is when you should be pushing the preparedness messages about everything. I mean, yes, specifically, you know, as I mentioned, how to cough, wash your hands, do all that stuff, but throw in one or two other things about the kit. Throw in a few other things, because people will listen now in probably the next few weeks. Uh, hopefully it's weeks, hopefully it's not months. Or uh, when a disaster happens, not to you, somewhere else. Take that opportunity, because people will listen. They won't listen other times. When a crisis happens, they'll listen. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, that fantastic. So our our goal today 
was to convene, have an event that convenes key leaders to share key insights. It was completely mission accomplished. Thank you to the speakers. Um, Linda, when we set out for this event, I think we had lower expectations and this exceeded expectations, so it was fantastic. Um, I do, this is the call to action. So build a plan, and as Brad would say, then build a second one because that one's gonna get thrown out right away. Um, make connections, and if, you know, so build a plan for your organization, build a plan for your family, build a plan for us, for the community. And if, if you don't know how to build a plan or you don't know how to participate, please join the Red Cross or figure out a way that you can personally be involved with the Red Cross, whether it's donating your time, donating your money, we have conveniently put envelopes in front of you on the tables, or whether it's your blood. Um, there, there are no shortage of ways to get involved in the community through the Red Cross. We would love to have you participate. Uh, I'm just gonna close with saying, um, you all have been a very, very involved audience. We had so many text questions that we had to, uh, we couldn't get them all out uh, on stage during the conference. We're going to aggregate those and put them in, uh, we're gonna have our panelists and our speakers respond to those questions. We're going to put them out on the Red Cross website. So please visit Red Cross, uh, redcrossblood.org and Red Cross Org DC Disaster Summit. Either of those ways you can get involved with the Red Cross, one of them through donations, one of them to continue the Q&A. So I'm going to say, please join us out in the atrium for further discussion. We will continue this um, disaster preparedness summit through um, many, many uh, subsequent summits. Um, Linda, any closing words that you'd like to share or should I just say, thank you, we're done, we'll see you out in the atrium and really appreciate your time. Make me feel so young.